Hello, I'm David Redman from the Aerospace Vehicle Systems Institute. The task of producing this document has been allocated to the Editorial Committee, or EDC as we call it. With a roster of over 700 participants, the Joint Committee has generated a lot of interest in the documents it is producing. Of course, ED324 is the focus. But with so many people contributing content to the document, and with so many opinions about what should and should not be included in it, the task of the EDC is to accurately and equitably integrate these inputs into a document that is readable, consistent, and complete and representative enough to achieve consensus through the EuroK open consultation and SAE balloting processes. The Joint Committee is organized into four active subgroups, which are described in more detail in other videos in this series. Each subgroup is responsible for different sections of the document, and each subgroup names a subgroup editor as their representative on the EDC. The EDC is led by the document co-editors, who coordinate the inputs from the subgroups and produce integrated draft versions of the document. The EDC then coordinates internal reviews of these drafts according to the committee's master schedule. Comments from these reviews are fed back to the subgroups for refinement of the document content. When the document has reached a sufficient level of maturity, EDC will work with EuroK and SAE staff to prepare the draft for formal consultation and ballot. The recommended practice is structured to provide usable guidance while maintaining consistency with existing standards and practices. The major elements include Section 4, which introduces the core construct of ED324, the Machine Learning Constituent, or MLC, and describes its interface to the system's development domain. Section 5, which covers ML unique aspects of development assurance planning. Section 6, which introduces recommended practices that are unique to the development of the MLC, including considerations such as management of training data and model design and validation processes. And Section 7, which provides guidance on ML unique considerations for implementing an MLC in hardware and software. The job of producing usable guidance that supports the safe introduction of new technologies into aeronautical systems is not trivial. The editorial committee will continue to support the experts on the EuroK SAE Joint Committee to bring ED324 and ARP 6983 to their timely publication. Hello, my name is Radek Zakrzewski and I am with Collins Aerospace. I am the secretary and a co-chair of the editorial team for the joint WG114 G34 committee that is drafting the first recommended practice for the development of aeronautical products implementing machine learning or ML. The document is written in a domain agnostic manner to be equally applicable to airborne and ATM ANS domains. It is intended to close the gap between the system development standards, such as ARP4754 or ED79, and the item implementation standards, such as DO178 or ED12. In classical software development, requirements for item implementation can be traced directly back to system performance requirements. But when we want to implement an ML model, the specification for this implementation is generated by a machine via the data-driven learning process and cannot be immediately traced back to system-level requirements. The new standard will provide means to demonstrate that the ML model indeed satisfies the original system requirements. In other words, it will help to close the traceability gap and will support assurance across the entire development chain. To fully achieve this goal for all types of ML applications, it would take way too much time. Given the pace at which ML technologies are entering the market, the industry need for usable guidance is now, and we cannot afford to wait. Therefore, we first focused on the concept of a minimum viable product, or an MVP. It will address a limited subset of ML applications in order to quickly establish a foothold for ML in aviation and to start building practical experience. For this reason, the first issue of the standard will only address supervised learning and only for systems of lower criticality, up to development assurance level C for airborne systems. This limitation does not mean that we preclude applications of higher criticality. In fact, we plan to address level B systems in the next release of the standard, 
Likewise, we are working to address reinforcement and unsupervised learning. These topics are excluded from the first issue only to make our minimum viable product quickly available to the industry. Work on future releases with extended scope will continue in parallel.